The double slit experiment basically showed us that light travels as waves and not as particles. So basically we had a screen and that screen had two openings, two very small slits. And when light traveled through those slits, it diffracted outward in all different directions. And eventually it formed many bright and dark lines on the screen that was placed in front of that double slit. So, let's suppose we choose two of these waves that follow the following pathway as shown in diagram A. So we have our double slit, slit number one and slit number two. Now these two waves initially begin in phase and they are separated by distance D. Now the distance between this double slit and the screen is given by L and we're assuming that D is much smaller than L. So they initially begin in phase and they both travel along the same general direction along the horizontal axis as shown by this purple dashed line. So because they initially begin in phase and because they travel the same distance, if we assume that the wavelength of these two waves is the same, they will end up converging at the same point and they will be exactly in phase. So the amplitudes will essentially sum up and will be greater and that will create constructive interference and that will lead to a bright line forming on this screen. Now that bright line is also known as a bright fringe. So once again, in diagram A, we're choosing two waves that have the same wavelength and that begin in phase. Now they diffract through the two slits and travel to the center of the screen. Since they both travel the same distance, they reach the center while in phase and constructive interference occurs and that leads to forming bright lines or bright fringes on this screen. Now let's move on to diagram B. In diagram B now we're choosing two other waves. Remember when the waves of light hit this slit they essentially diffract in all different directions. So now we're choosing these two waves of light. Let's suppose this wave of light travels through the slit and diffracts only slightly upward while this wave diffracts slightly more more. So the entire goal of these two waves is to reach the same point on this screen. So initially they begin in phase and they're separated by distance d. Now notice this top wave has to travel less than this bottom wave and because they have the same exact wavelength and initially begin in phase because this bottom wave has to travel more, they will end up being exactly out of phase because this lower wave essentially travels a distance one half multiplied by the wavelength more than this top wave. So they end up being out of phase and these amplitudes will essentially cancel out and destructive interference will take place and that will lead to forming dark lines or dark fringes on this screen. So, once again, we choose two waves that have the same wavelength that are initially in phase and when they diffract, they travel different distances as shown in this diagram. So they travel along the following general direction that forms an angle theta with respect to the horizontal. Now the lower wave, let's suppose, is out of phase by one half multiplied by lambda when they finally reach this position and so when they reach a point on the screen destructive interference takes place. Now can we determine where the bright and dark lines are actually formed. So let's suppose we take the following double slit screen. We have opening number one and opening number two. So now we take two waves that we treat as if they were rays of light. So that will essentially simplify 
our diagram. So let's suppose we have wave number one and wave number two, and they're separated by distance d. So these two ang or these two uh, purple dashed lines are simply our horizontal axis along which our ray of light shown in blue essentially diffracts upward. So if we assume that the separation distance between the waves is much smaller than the distance to the screen, so if this distance d is much smaller than this distance l, then the rays of light will essentially be parallel with respect to one another when they actually diffract. Now let's suppose the angle theta represents this angle that the ray makes with respect to the horizontal. So these are the horizontal lines, these are the rays, because they're parallel and these are parallel, these angles are exactly the same. Now let's draw a perpendicular bisector that bisects these two rays of light as shown by the following red dashed line. So that means this line is basically perpendicular to these two blue rays. So that basically means if we draw a right triangle, this angle will be the angle theta that corresponds to these two angles. Why? Well, if this is 90 degrees and this is 90 degrees, then this angle is theta. This angle is basically 90 minus theta. And so this must be theta. So now we see that the lower ray travels an extra distance that is equal to the length of the base of the right triangle. So basically, remember, this upper ray travels less than this lower ray, and that's because this bottom ray has to travel this extra distance as shown by the following parentheses. So this is the base of the following right triangle. So we have 90 degrees, this is theta, and this this, the hypotenuse of our right triangle, represents the distance d between our two rays. So if we set up the right triangle, we see that we can actually calculate what this extra distance is that this lower ray travels. So our triangle is as follows. This hypotenuse is d, the height of the triangle is given by the purple, and this base is what we're looking for. So we know this angle and d, so that means sine of theta is equal to what we're looking for divided by d. So if we rearrange that, we see that this base length is equal to d multiplied by sine of theta, where d is simply the separation distance and theta is the angle that these rays of light make with respect to the horizontal. So we see that constructive interference takes place when the path difference between these two waves is equal to a whole number of the wavelength. So that basically gives us the following equation. M, our whole number, multiplied by lambda is equal to D multiplied by sine theta that was obtained from this right triangle where M is a whole number, 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. So this equation basically means our two waves are in phase and that leads to constructive interference. So if we look at the following diagram A, in this particular case, the two waves begin in the same phase and end up being in the same phase because they travel the same distance. So that means this is zero and M is zero, but it would have worked as well if M was one, two, three. That basically means we shift this entire wave to the right or to the left. Now, 
destructive interference occurs when the path difference is given by this equation. So now it's no longer a whole number multiple of the wavelength, but it's given by this. So m plus one half multiplied by phi multiplied by lambda is equal to d multiplied by sine theta, where m is still a whole number, zero, one, two, three. So this factor basically comes from the fact that in order to produce destructive interference, the waves have to be out of phase. So this leads us to destructive interference. In other words, our waves are out of phase and that produces dark lines or dark fringes. While this equation leads to constructive interference and that produces bright lines or bright fringes.